Welcome to VO Africa, Africa's largest voice over conference. Leslie O. Leslie O. I'm Leslie O, a professional with a sexy glow from head right to toe. Kinda remind them of the nuclear Patrick Jones. Who they asking for? Me and that's for sure. It's like the whole world been waiting on me. I walked in the room and I'm all that they see. A talented, multi-faceted model, host, voiceover, actress, here, world traveler, full calendar, self-investor, working hard is my pleasure, a visionary, a mother and a go-getter, mama-preneur, from here it only gets better, conscious, pure, right up to the plate, I step up the epitome of beauty and brains, made a way and created a lane, made a way and created my name, when you hear me then you know what to say, bless me over. Just from Prince George's young brown boss here Step into my office Queen of all trades Master of all of them Opinion that's popular I'm classy and marvelous How she do what she do And make it seem effortless Light up the room when I step in this Talent can't question it Achieve all my goals That's a definite I handle my business when I step in this From the runway to the studio You're gonna get Leslie It does take a lot to impress me Respect me I'm more than melanated and sexy A voice can change the world So let me Leslie over Good afternoon, good afternoon. If you don't know by now, my name is Leslie Olavisi, and I am Leslie O Voice, and Leslie O Voice is me. And the reason why I wanted to start off this session with my theme song is because that's where I want your mind, where your vision has to go. It needs to go big. You need to be the most braggadocious, self promoting, self-believing, self-aggrandizing hype man for yourself because nobody's going to push you, believe in you, or promote you like you do for yourself. So, my name's Leslie Olabisi. Um, uh, my mother is Nigerian, and my father is from South Carolina. And I'm over here, you know, on the East Coast in the Mid-Atlantic, in the great state of Maryland, where I was born and reared. Uh, I am an actor, host, and award-winning voiceover artist, uh, and I started off acting first, and I don't think I need this, and I would say that acting uh, definitely has helped a lot with my voiceover journey, um, and with recording, with sessions, so I would advise um, all voiceover artists to take if you're not already an actor, but to definitely invest in some acting classes because as voiceover artists, we are voice actors. We are selling, presenting, telling, sharing points of views, stories, emotions that are to relate to the audience. And you have to be able to put yourself into character. You have to be able to take direction well. And I uh, firmly believe that my acting experience and training uh, has helped um, afford that. So for the training slide, you know, I'm sure that you will hear, this won't be the first time, but you will hear it time and time again for the next couple of days how important training is. So here um, are some of the places, these basically, this is pretty much like all of the places where I train, have trained, and continue to train with. Um, I started off at the Studio Theater Conservatory in Washington, D.C. for acting. And that is around that time when I started auditioning when the voiceover bug or the idea was 
planted in my head, you know, like Inception. And I was auditioning. Um, I was also working in a restaurant. And a filmmaker named uh, Art Jones, who we are now friends all these years later, it's very interesting, uh, came in and was like, oh, you have, a, you have a nice voice. Do you do voiceover by chance? And I said no. And um, I thought about that. And then as I continued to go on auditions, casting directors would ask. And um, I said, I need to look into this voiceover thing. So fast forward, I came to fully devote my time into my entertainment career. I came back to New York. I attended the Lee Strasberg Theater and Film Institute in Union Square. And my me- one of my method teachers, Marcel, who was your last name, Marcel Simino. Canadian, French, uh, French Canadian, um, was also a successful voiceover actor. So I said, where do I start? He directed me to Andy Roth, Andy Roth casting. So I started off with an intensive with Andy Roth with a group of other people. And from that session, it was the determining session. Of, do you really want to do this? What are all of the things that are involved? The investment in yourself, the investment in time, in training, in um, studio access, um, equipment, demos, the whole nine. And um, I, you know, the voiceover bug had bitten me. So I was intrigued and I was excited. I then had my off-Broadway debut with a showcase theater company called Tap NYC, the Actors Project NYC, which is a great company also, and is aimed at helping actors get professional representation. And so from that run, I got representation across the board. At the same time, I so happened to meet a young man who was a recording engineer and mixing engineer who had his own studio. So now I'm taking what I got from my first voiceover training and now I'm going in the, into the studio and I'm practicing and I'm practicing. I, um, I am going about the voiceover route in the way that the industry suggests. Yes? Of course, if you're going to be professional, then you need to respect the industry and the lane and the steps that are time-tested, proven, and what people are used to. However, I also had to put the Leslie spin on it. So let's go to hustle slide. So think outside the box. Not only do 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 I decide to go the traditional route, but I say, okay, how am I looking at my voiceover career? How am I going to approach this? What's going to make me different? Because I'm already in a big city, in a big industry, where only a small few can really make a survivable living income. So what's going to be different about me? Yeah, sure, I think I'm fabulous. Everybody thinks they're fabulous. And, and you are in your own right. But how are you going to stand apart? You stand apart by being good, being well-trained, being easy to work with, but then also you have to come with You have to have something else going on. And so my approach, I said, well, what would happen if I took just a general independent artist approach to this voiceover thing? Meaning the same way a rapper or a singer would approach their music career, maybe I can use some of those same lanes to come up and set myself apart as a voiceover artist. Because if I go into spaces and I'm the only one, people are going to remember me more. I'm going to be more impactful. That was, this, was my, this was my thinking. So I reach out to a, a consultant, a platinum award-winning producer, Keith Clizart. And he was, I, I found him s- on LinkedIn somehow. So it must have been divinely aligned. I think all of these things were and I did an independent artist consultation. But I said, hey, but I'm a voiceover artist. So then he just gave me some outside-of-the-box ideas. And one of the things um, was to recreate commercials. And so if you were to go to my YouTube channel, which is LOV Studios, one word. And please subscribe, by the way. Um, I think the first playlist is going to be a bunch of my voiceover um, samples. 
And there's about five commercials in there that I actually recreated from scratch with that recording engineer who I began to go into the studio, practice, listen to voiceovers, listen to mine. What's different? Oh, I need to take the breath out. Oh, I need to do this. Oh, the way you cut it here. Oh, learning, practicing, and thinking outside of the box. So, um... You can take a look at those at a at a later date, but it's LOV Studios, one word. And you will see at the end, the ones that I recreated, at the end it will say voiceover by Leslie Olabisi, recorded and mixed by Samuel Innocent. So you'll know the difference, but you won't be able to tell the difference until the end. And that was my goal, was just to continuously keep perfecting. Now, there are going to be people, maybe even your own representatives, that will say, yeah, I don't know if you should spend your time doing that. I don't know if that's the right thing for you. I don't know if you have the right voice for that. And let me tell you something. Every voice is the right voice for voiceover. It's just about identifying what you can do with your voice and apply it to what types of voiceovers that you want to specialize in. Uh, so for me, I think I'm a pretty good storyteller. What do you think so far? Are you engaged? And so narrations happen to be something that I book the most. However, I also convince people pretty well of things. You should come on and you should you should do this. Hey, you need to go and watch that, which is why probably I got an award for radio promo. And so knowing these things, having your voice analyzed and evaluated for different brands and different types of commercials um, and voiceover work, which I did, will come in handy. So you have training. Uh, you have thinking outside the box as well as going along with the required industry standards. And then you also have um, selecting and identifying what is going to be your path. Like, where do you want to go? And then when you do that, don't put a limit on it. You should dream so big that they your dreams scare you. That's something that I got from Dame Dash. Uh, if you are familiar, I feel like everybody should be familiar, but that is one of the co-founders of Rockefeller Records, one of the most influential um, men, uh, CEOs, and labels to impact the rap and hip-hop industry from the United States across the world, and as well as redefining the new independent artists and how to be a boss and dream big and basically do things for yourself so definitely look him up um if you don't know who i'm talking about but what i am going to do is i'm going to share a video so that you can um have an idea of just one snippet of my journey when i applied the idea of thinking outside the box so i got a voiceover agent i Let's go, let me look at the list. So demo. So first thing you have to do, obviously, is your demo. And then I started sending the demo out with emails. I was going online. I can't even, I don't even know where I got these emails from. I was going online, doing searches. So now here's the, the hustle was the grunt work. This is the planting of the seeds. Nothing is going to fall in your lap or just, your phone's not just going to ring out of the blue and somebody says, hey, I have a voiceover job for you. It doesn't work like that. You have to plant seeds and water them, and then they grow, and then it comes back to you. So emails, I sent plenty my demo to plenty emails, and eventually I got a response where somebody said they would put me on a trial, and then after some months, they ended up signing me. So definitely emailing your demos, um, looking at agencies, um, and the way that they have their submission processes you always want to again industry standards but then also thinking outside the box i believe in the in in the in the dual approach maybe it's because i'm a gemini i don't know um phone calls so i did a master go back to training slide i did a master voiceover program for, with Voices for All. And my teacher, um, Aaron, gave me this strategy of basically 
calling different production companies and just, you know, a lot of production companies will have rosters of voiceover talent that they just go to when they have a project that needs voiceover. We can go back to the hustle slide. And uh, I got in the habit of making X amount of calls every day, building a contact list, and then following up. Uh, sending updated demos to those individuals, sharing um, significant news, like for instance, if I won an award or was nom or or was a part of a film that was nominated, I was not directly nominated, but the film Unmarked, a documentary directed by Brad Bennett and uh, Chris Haley, which is Alex Haley's nephew, uh, the film was nominated, and I was the narrator on the film. I was the only narrator on the film, so. So sharing significant um, um, milestones like that, but building that contact list. So phone calls, emails, these are the things that will now have people coming back to you. Plus your traditional route, with which is auditioning with your voice agents and having them submit you um, for things like that, right? Um, but I can't remember his name. What is his name? Um, Robert Dewey's, Dewey's, something like that. I think I'm going to say it's Van, Dewey's, something Dewey's. He said, oh no, it was my teacher. My teacher said that really 15% of your overall voiceover money is coming from auditions. So you're going to have to be a little bit more dynamic and creative and really dig in with that hustle attitude to uh, get work and opportunities you know and it's a numbers game think of it as, as it's it's a num it's a numbers game the more you put in the more seeds you plant the more chance you have for a better harvest so back to my um, idea of how can I take this independent artist approach I want to do you know try a different lane, do something different. So as I'm going into the studio, I'm starting to send out stuff. I'm starting to get a few um, auditions. I'm starting to get just a little bit of traction, but it's just enough to keep me motivated to keep going, keep creating, A, always be creating, right? A, B, C, always be creating. Uh, I learned that Dame Dash is starting these classes, these independent artist classes so I, I say oh my goodness I have to join in and guess what I'm the only voiceover artist there so I proceed to make it my point to figure out how can I get called on every time so I set my sights I said one day I'm going to meet this man and he is going to help me I'm going to figure it out reach for more Set your sights high. Even if you don't know how exactly you're going to get there, you have to want to go far in, in whatever it is that you do. And you have to believe that you can get there. And once you have that belief, then you can identify the actual steps. And then you just take it one step at a time. So we can play the mindset shift video now. And this is just a sample of my voiceover journey. Hi, how are hey. you? Leslie O voiceover here. Most of the link to the video. Did you get it? I did get it and I watched it and I like it. Actually, do we have it loaded up? Uh, no, but I can so let's see if we can load that up. I just sent it. I just sent it up. So you should like this one even better. Oh, so you're giving me permission to use it? Perfected. Are you giving me, do I have permission to use it? That's what I wanted to ask you. Absolutely. Okay, cool. I'll use it. I'm going to play it. I like it. I think your voice is good. You know, it adds something to it. But if you make it, I'll definitely use it. See, that's the thing. I mean, you know, it was at a, it was at a, good, it was at a good level. What we'll do is we'll play it and then we'll talk about it. You know, no problem. I, I, I like it. It's dope. What else is next for you? Okay. Dame Dash presents Dame Dash Studios, a 24-hour-a-day programming experience with 100% original content. Health is Wealth with Raquel Horn, teaching yoga and vegan recipes that your most carnivorous advocate will love. Dame Dash Pictures, featuring films and lifestyle content as he travels the world to expand your definition of cool. And if you don't know, you better ask him yourself at Poppington University Live, 
where entrepreneurs go to learn how to avoid culture vultures. All this and more at Dame Dash Studios, streaming on dame-studios.com, Facebook, and Instagram TV. Join today. You know, I got both assignments. So one assignment you gave me okay. specifically was everything that I've gotten done since last week. I'm going to run through it real quick so I don't take too much time. Okay, I worked on a list of people and places for my L.A. trip. I'm coming to L.A. next month. Made 67 production calls for my voiceover business. I got another commercial agent. Um, did another voiceover artist interlude. I worked on my Secret Pizza Party audiobook. I applied for another residency and got an interview. I submitted for a couple of voiceover auditions. I looked up how to get I am nominated for the Grammy and I identified a member of the Grammys that I know in town. I'm out and you're done. Um, so the next thing I want you to do next week, and I like that, I'd like you to keep doing that. Quick question, being that you're devoting this energy, do you feel it yielding? Do you feel like you're moving forward? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Everything is better because, again, I'm, like, more focused. So before, like, the idea of even going after a Grammy, right, it was something in my head. I thought, oh, yeah, sometime in my, the future I could do it. But then once you were like, no, you're supposed to be every day. It's not just this year. It's all the time. It's already, I already feel like I've already conquered half the way. You know what I'm saying? I don't feel like it's that well, big of what, a feat. Guess what? Guess what? What? You've got student of the month. <laughs> I'm also somebody that does everything for everybody. I'm going to teach you how to do it. Okay. What I did this first, what I did is I kept them all in the dark with my process. Is to keep people in the dark and create dysfunction based on what be productive within it and see who can survive. Tell them to circle out of road. That's some funny shit. <laughs> 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 what I want you to do now is take your fish and I want you to make a documentary one episode about your days with day. And be honest and say everything you gotta can every day. So go through it. It's like you just did. I want to see that movie. That's my talent to you. And I'll hear that. That'll be your show. You got to work with me for three days. You got to, you were at my house for every place, right? Yes. All right. <laughs> and so I went from thinking of another way to connect to someone who could help influence my career reset my mindset give me um strategies to help me achieve my goals and ended up right there in la in the studio being mentored by dame dash why because i thought outside the box because i believed that i could be there and i was there <laughs> and you know and now i'm working on the documentary so that it can be aired on his network dame dash studios and so that's just one example of um, my journey. And again, some of you might just only do voiceover. And so it's going to be a little bit different. But because I'm an actor and a host and a voiceover artist, uh, this is more relevant um, and more, um, how do you say, full of texture. It's more layered than uh, just one single approach. So collaborate um as you continue to meet other artists 
You will find that maybe you can come together and work on something. Maybe you want to get into animation, but you don't actually have any animation jobs. Well, then you need to find an animator, somebody who's willing to or who already is creating animations. Or if, if or you might find somebody that will write something for you. Or maybe it'll be like a short and you can find another voiceover artist and you two can come together or you three can come together or you can hold your own casting and tell your own story and hire an animator to do something short. It's probably going to need to be very short because animation is expensive, but the whole idea is to collaborate with other artists. They can be other voiceover artists or they can be artists across the industries. So again, when I say thinking outside the box and me approaching my voiceover journey with a Leslie approach as well and uh, identifying what your voice is best at I decided okay I'm gonna ha I'm gonna pick some niche areas and one is children's animation Ch I mean excuse me uh, it's children's narration because one I love children working with children and the books are fun and they're not too long I don't want to narrate you know an autobiography that's 384 pages, 725 pages, and all of that, unless it's something spectacular. I don't want to do that. But there are some of you or other voiceover artists where that is what they do, is just straight narration. So you have to know what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses. You see how much I move around and I'm dancing and stuff? I'm not sitting in the studio for 32 hours recording a book. I'm not doing that. But... A children's book where I get to add music and I get to do different voices and jump around and have fun. That's me. So that's one of my specialties. The other one I created, I made up out of thin air. And it's called, it's Album Interludes and Collaborations with Artists. And you can only get that, as far as I know, with Leslie O. Voice. What are album interludes and album collaborations for artists? Well... I don't know how old everyone is, but in the 90s and the two aughts, you know, on CDs, <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm not condescending. Um, you know, the interlude was an integral part of the storytelling of the artist as far as their complete audio project. And so, you know, some of the best albums that we have have the most memorable interludes, the Fugees, the Fugees, the score. Um... Uh, Dr. Dre, The Chronic, uh, Andre 3000, The Love Below, um, Kanye West, Late Registration, Graduation, College Dropout, you know, all of his are great. Um, so we have all these great albums that had these cool interludes. TLC, Crazy Sexy Cool. All these um, great albums that had these these funny interludes where you would get a chance to get a little insight into the artist's character or they might just want to make you laugh or it might be a part of the storytelling of the album. So that was a regular. And then as we switched to digital and streaming media um, medium where people were just buying single songs and not complete albums and that kind of phased out and became obsolete. But... I am a firm believer, and it is true. The articles are out there, you can do the research, the interludes are making a comeback. And so I decided that that would be my niche area um, that I would have something to offer. And so with that, I created a project. Again, always be creating. After being in the Dame Dash studio and thinking, what can I make? What can I create? I created a project called the Ludes Mixtape. Um, which is on Spinrilla, if you look it up, or on my website, voiceleslie.com. Um, and I made an album completely out of interludes, and what I did was remix former interludes from the 90s and 2000s that were the most popular. And that serves now as a work, a body of work, that when I decide to pitch to a different artist if I meet a rapper at an industry event and I say you should do something different you should add voiceover to your um, album or you should add an interlude or I can do an outro these are additional streams and additional 
collaborations that you can add into your voice over a portfolio. Obviously, you don't have to go this route, but find something that you're into that's uniquely you that you can put to spin into voiceover. You know, the, most people um, don't really know what voiceover is. It's like they hear the word, they think they know, but when they sit and think about it, when they meet you, they, they're like, wait, what is a voiceover artist again? What do you do again? Oh, you mean like cartoons? That's kind of where their mind goes. But you have, again, the straight industry route, which definitely you want to do. You want to have a voiceover agent if you want any chance at local, regional, national, and global representation and um, opportunities, auditions, campaigns. You want to definitely do that. But then... You can find a lane within yourself where you can market direct to consumer. Pick something that you're really good at. If it's maybe it's a voicemail messages, professional voicemail messages, and you have an inside track because your mother is the councilwoman at the something or other, or she's the the chief uh, secretary for the business uh, collective in your town, and she has access to fifty businesses. Well. Boom, then you can go and pitch to those businesses and do all of their voicemail, their telephony, their um, their website voice. You can create something, come up with something that's uniquely you. So that way you are attacking the industry on multiple fronts. Um, and so, you know, that's what I would say as far as the hustle is concerned. Um, can you pull that slide up one more? Let me make sure that I covered everything on there. Ha! Ah, mind, body, wellness. So with all of these things, you've got your demos, you're doing your emails, you're planting your seeds, you're watering your seeds, you're following up, you're calling people, you're in the studio, you're practicing, you're in the house, you're watching TV and you hear the commercial and you say, oh, I can do that better. And then you do it in your own voice and you put your own spin. You're just constantly, constantly putting into yourself, pouring into yourself. You're collaborating with other people. You're finding another artist and you say, come on, let's do something. Oh, hey, I, I see this project that you did. I can make it better with voiceover. Here you go. Get your name out there. You are uh, cross-promoting. So you, after you've collaborated with each other, you take each other's platforms and then you promote the other person's thing on yours plus the project that you do. Uh, so you cross-promotion is another way to get your name out there as um, any type of artist. You're thinking outside the box. You're always creating something. You need to pick a project and you always need to be working on it because in that work, in that constant creation, you are putting it out into the ether for the universe to bring back a harvest of your hard work. You cannot just sit around and wait for an audition to be sent to you. You have to put in work. You have to create. And then you will start to see that things will, just, will start to come to you. So once you have done all of that, Mind, body, wellness. It is important for you to have a sense of mindfulness. Um, and there's all there's plenty of resources. But your mindfulness, your self-esteem, your mental health, um, your, your actual body, the mind-body connection. You know, what are you eating? What are you drinking? Vocal care. All of these things are also integral to being successful as a voiceover artist, in my opinion, just being happy in life. You know, making sure that you're mental, that you're in a calm state of, you're not always stressed, you're not always in a state of frenzy, you're not always, you know, putting out fires and solving problems, but that you find balance is also equally important. Because when it comes to strategies and all of the difficulties that come along with the industries, it's going to help you manage and stay strong in your belief that you have what it takes. And so I will say the last slide, which is division. I'm not chasing dreams. I'm achieving goals. You set your sights on something big, and then you break it down into steps, 
of what you have to do and you work backwards and now they become goals and it, now your dream is actually something that's attainable it's not just something that's floating up in your head it's not just something that oh maybe one day it could happen but they're actual hard goals that you can attain and with that remaining few minutes that we have the questions from Cynthia how many networks has she gotten from her YouTube channel and social media really the way to go to grow so I'm not suggesting that you go and start a YouTube channel I'm also an, a host and so I started my YouTube channel that was really inspiration from my experience with Dame Dash and creating original content but then also to practice um, me being in front of the camera so the fact of my level of comfort with talking to you all now there's nobody here i'm in a room by myself there's lights and there's cameras and i'm just looking straight into the lens but i'm very comfortable but i'm this level of comfortable because i started my youtube channel and i've been doing it now for about a year and some months so that's why i created the youtube channel and then i just continued you know to add i continued to add content and what that also allows me to do is it allows me to get into spaces as a content creator that I might not have been invited to before like industry events and different things like that where I then I can go and pitch my voiceover so for instance um, in DC there is a custom shoe stop you'll see it on my channel uh, Zaza Boutique where I went there one day I was buying um, shoes for my son uh, one of the uh, people there one of the partners or whatever um, was a former radio person who is a brand ambassador for several labels they have these industry nights where they will have listening parties for different um recording artists who actually have major label deals and because i was a content creator it's like he, he started inviting me to the thing so now i can go up to this rapper and be like hey you need to add voiceover to your artist so it's in line with one of my niche areas so that's what the purpose of my youtube channel is I'll bring you on as we finish this. And if are there any more questions? All right. And so with that, then I'll just leave on a highlight, which is the acceptance speech. So I won the So Boss Award for Outstanding Radio Promo, Best Voice Over. And it's just a culmination of all the seeds, the planning, the hustling, the thinking outside the box, the collaborating, and all of that. And going the traditional route. So, oh wait, somebody said, can you elaborate on how acting classes helped you as a voice artist? Yes. So when someone, okay, so when you act and somebody uh, wants you to come uh, into a place of distress, you're in a scene, let's say you're in acting class and you're in a scene and you're in a place of distress and so you're acting and you're getting into character and you're expressing those those things. There are There are strategies, there are... Um, steps that you will take to get yourself there the planning the preparation right and then after rep repetition you'll be able to get there quicker and quicker and quicker so now when you take that and then you translate it to when you get an audition and it's for a law firm and it's cerebral palsy and we want you to emote care and concern it's the same thing how are you going to get there you can't fake it right and acting you figure out how to get there from a visceral place, from the inside. They teach you strategies on how to pull from real experiences and real emotions to tell this story, to sell this story as if it's real, even though it's make-believe. So that's how acting classes help me. And when you're in a session, and, they, and you have literally, there's four lines, and the session is for one hour, and you have to figure out, how am I going to deliver this a bunch of different ways? <laughs> When they say, oh, can you make it a little bit more uh, peppy? Um, can you make it so, we don't want announcery. We don't want it to be salesy. We don't, they use all of these different terms that you have to quickly, at the drop of a dime, interpret what it is that they mean and then deliver something quick. And I think that, uh, and I know that acting classes help me be more easily directable and easy to um, emote that particular emotion or feel. And so, with that, that's it and that's all. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Leslie Olabisi, Leslie O Voice. You know, you can look me up online. I'm all over the place.
thanks for your attention and please hit me up on social media for additional questions or feedback or anything it's been a pleasure and the voice arts goes to Leslie Oversee, my Rainey's Black Bottom. From producer Denzel Washington comes Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. They don't care nothing about me. All they want is my voice. Starring BAFTA and Academy Award winner Viola Davis and Chadwick Boseman. I know how to play real music. Everybody can play like I gotta do. BBC Culture gives the film five stars and Variety calls it an acting masterclass. It's been empty world without the blues. Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, only on Netflix. Come on, girl. Come on up here, girl. Come on, Leslie. Give it up for Leslie Oversee! Yes! Yes! I don't know how much time they've been giving everybody. So I have been practicing an award speech for 10 years, I knew I was going to win an award for something. <laughs> and of course, it doesn't sound like anything in my head. <sighs> thank you, thank you. Everybody who voted for me, if you're on the board or however this thing goes, <sighs> my manager the Talent Express, Lorna Rainey, Anastasia, Evelyn, my engineer, Sam. This guy, this guy had a studio, and I said, I want to get into voiceover. Neither one of us knew what we were doing, but he let me keep coming in here recording crappy voiceovers over and over again <laughs> until we could get together a demo, until I could get an agent. <sighs> Divine Voices in the UK, that's where the uh, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, uh, uh, that's how I got that one. So thank you to Divine, thank you to Sam, my engineer, thank you to my friends, Kevin, and <laughs> Aisha, and Twyla, and Deja, and Miss Carol, who told me when I was in high school that I was going to be a star. <laughs> oh gosh, the people that I'm going to forget, don't be mad. But to my mom, she's the biggest diva in the world. Oh, she has fabulous jewelry and I'm wearing her jewelry. I'm Nigerian American and I wanted to represent my culture. So she, so for my Nigerian brothers and sisters, she let me take her ear on booba and turn it into style. Thank you. She was very hyped. What you call crunk right there, how we say down south.